my name is Robert Sesniak. I'm a blogger with Connected. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to another interview uh, from the 2011 AICHE Annual Conference here in Minneapolis. Uh, today we have joining us Dr. Hadi Mahabadi. 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 Hi, my name is Robert Sesniak. I'm a blogger for Connected. I'd like to welcome you to another interview from the 2011 AICHE Annual Conference. Here in Minneapolis. Uh, joining us today is Dr. Hadi Mahabadi from Xerox, uh, Vice President and Director, Xerox Research Center. Uh, welcome and congratulations Thank on you. your award. Thank you very much. It's uh, great to be here and being able to contribute to the, this annual meeting. Uh, if you could please start us off with a some brief summary of your talk today. Yeah. Uh, the talk, uh, which I presented today was uh, uh, related to emulsion aggregation process, the new process and design for toner uh, that Xerox is now using all over the world. Uh, this toner uh, was designed originally in Xerox Research Center in Canada. It was based on customer need of using less toner page and uh, what we did, uh, we think of what customer needs are, what is our current process are, which was melt mixing and grinding process. And we recognize that that process does not meet customer needs. So we had to invent a new process. At that time, uh, we recognized that nanotechnology is going to play a major role in the future of material. So we brought the nanotechnology our center, we hire a few people, the infrastructure we need, we form partnership with National Institute of Nanotechnology, which have a lot of uh, instrumentation for nanotechnology, <coughs> and then we start with this, uh, uh, with this process uh, through a significant effort of our chemists and chemical engineer, we've been able to design process which used nanotechnology methodology to design toner from angstrom to a micron size, so growing it up with very high yield, low energy consumption, and uh, open up the design space so we could design toner which before and with previous process we were not able to design. And as I said, it's been Manufacture. Now it's been manufactured all over the world, and there are customer is benefiting from this uh, novel technology. Okay. And as you mentioned, there was a significant reduction in the amount of toner that each customer needs to print a page. Uh, was that a hard sell to, uh, to get funding to, to reduce the product you were going to sell to customers? Yeah, of course. Uh, from economic analysis point, we had to build a new manufacturing, and we had to sell less toner. But in, in any business, you have to satisfy the customer in order to gain market share and or uh, increase generally this printing approach. So if you were thinking only from business point of view, this was not the right thing to do, because we have to reinvest on all of our manufacturing and reduce our toner. <coughs> Sell the volume of our toner. But if you are thinking of customer satisfaction, uh, increase in, in uh, market share, and generally increasing the printing, because if you are um, more satisfied, you print it more. Right. Especially when we start moving from black and white to the color, people want to print more color. So we went after that opportunity. So this help us to sell, still we sell more toner, but the individual customer mm -hmm. use less okay. toner yes. per page. Okay. Um, and you also mentioned that uh, there were three to four hundred patents issued um, during the development of this new process. Mm -hmm. How were the teams organized uh, size-wise and uh, discipline-wise to, to promote such innovation? Yeah. To, uh, to 
to reduce the cycle time, increase the innovativeness, uh, we use multidisciplinary team, uh, which from the beginning was chemist, chemical engineer, physical chemist, and then later on we add to them the development group, manufacturing group, product development group. So it's become a bigger as we went forward. A starting point of it, which was the idea generation, was maybe a, a dozen of chemists and chemical engineers and physicists. But at the time of product development, and manufacturing, which was going in a parallel, the team was over 100. Oh, wow. uh, these are different disciplines, this is what, and of course, within the Xerox, as I said, we have matrix management. So if we are working on innovation project, which is small, let's say we have a team of 10 people working at very early stage, we call it project, and we have project leader. The project leaders lead the project, but the people within it could be chemists, chemical engineers. Each of these members are reporting to different managers, but for that project, they are together. Okay. Later on, this become bigger, become the whole center becomes a program. So it's become 20, 30 people. And beyond the center, sometimes three centers working together on one project. And we have, we call it trust manager, which I was the trust manager in the Europe Corporation for all the inkjet. Everything going on in inkjet, many program, many project. One person was looking after, of course, the people are reporting manager in different centers. This helps to reduce the cycle time, help innovation better, because as I said, at the interface of different disciplines, you could invent. If discipline is separated, you don't have opportunity to invent at the, uh, at the boundaries of uh, the different uh, uh, competencies. And so all of these groups, are they located in the same same building, or no? They, they are in different place. We, uh, we through video conferencing. Okay. What if it is necessary? We call the meetings, which is important. People travel, and all is in one place. But they are reporting to different managers. They are in different place. But when it comes to that project, all are together, and there is a project leader. All these patents that were issued um, was what was the breakdown in the number of people that, that were involved in the patents? Was we had sometimes 15 people in one patent, uh, but there are other times we have two, two or three people. Because according to law, the person who come up with the idea is owner of the patent. So if one person have an idea and then ask a lot of to help to reduce it to practice, that one person own the patent. Okay. But if you brainstorm a problem in a, in a team of 14, 15 people, and they all contribute, and at the end of it, everybody say, ah, this is the answer. <laughs> so that is a team invention. Then the whole team are authors of that uh, idea. In a project like this, like how many different roles would you see a chemical engineer participate in? Uh, R&D, manufacturing? Yes. First of all, on the research side of it, the design of particles, that's chemical role. The design of process to make the particle was chemical engineers. But they were together working together. Going to happen when I